America's newest rock and roll sensation, the California Kid, Richie Valens! Richie Valens, born Richard Stephen Valenzuela, was a pioneering Mexican-American musician who left an indelible mark on rock and roll. Despite his brief career, cut short by a tragic plane crash at age 17, Valen's vibrant music and cultural impact continue to resonate in the music world. Did you hear what the radio said about Richie? Are you sure he said Richie? Oh my God. What am I gone? Early life and musical beginnings. Richie Valens, born Richard Stephen Valenzuela on May 13, 1941, in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles, California, entered a world that hummed with the vibrant rhythms of Mexican folk music. His parents, Joseph Stephen Valenzuela and Concepcion Concha, Reyes, instilled in him an early appreciation for music, which was deeply intertwined with his Mexican heritage. This cultural tapestry of sounds and stories laid the foundation for Valens's. Eventual foray into rock and roll. Growing up in a working class neighborhood, Valens was exposed to a diverse array of musical influences. Apart from the traditional Mexican tunes that echoed in his household, the burgeoning rock and roll scene and the rhythm and blues played a pivotal role in shaping his musical tastes. His family life, though marred by financial struggles, was rich in love and encouragement particularly from his mother, who supported his early interest in music. Valen's musical journey began at a tender age. By five, he was already showing an interest in making his own music. His curiosity and passion led him to master the guitar, an instrument that would become synonymous with his name. Despite being naturally left-handed, Valen's overcame this challenge by learning to play a right-handed guitar, a testament to his determination and love for music. His self-taught skills soon blossomed into an extraordinary talent, turning heads in his neighborhood and at school. Ricky Ricardo Valenzuela! <laughs> Valens attended Pacoima Junior High School, where he was a popular student known for his musical talent. His guitar became a constant companion, Ooh, a source of solace and expression. Tragedy struck when Valens was a young boy. A mid-air collision of two airplanes above his school resulted in the death of his best friend. This incident left a profound impact on Valens, instilling a deep-rooted fear of flying that would tragically foreshadow his untimely death. Despite this fear, Valens' passion for music continued to flourish. He often performed at school events and local gatherings, showcasing his talent for singing and guitar playing. His performances were not just displays of musical skill, but also expressions of his cultural identity. Valens blended elements of Mexican music with rock and roll, creating a unique sound that resonated with a wide audience. Valens's breakthrough came at the age of 16. His participation in a local band, The Silhouettes, marked the beginning of his professional career. Initially, he joined as a guitarist, but his destiny as a frontman was sealed when the main vocalist left the band. Valens's charismatic presence and soulful voice quickly made him the star of the show. It was during this time that Valens caught the attention of Bob Keane, the owner of Del Phi Records. Keane, recognizing Valens' raw talent and unique blend of musical styles, offered him a chance to record professionally. This opportunity was a turning point in Valens's life, catapulting him from a local talent to a rising star in the music industry. Under Keane's guidance, Valens began recording at Gold Star Studios in Hollywood. His first recordings were remarkable for their fusion of rock and roll energy with the traditional rhythms of Mexican music. This blend was groundbreaking, offering listeners something fresh and exciting. <laughs> Valens's music was not just entertainment, it was a bold statement of cultural pride and innovation. One of Valens's first major recordings was, Come on, let's go. Um, I want to discuss one thing with you, okay? Come here. A song that captured the spirit of the burgeoning rock and roll era. The song was an instant hit, showcasing Valens, 
energetic guitar playing, and dynamic vocal style. This success was quickly followed by other hits, including Donna and the iconic La Bamba. Donna, a romantic ballad, was dedicated to his high school sweetheart Donna Ludwig and reflected the softer, more heartfelt side of Valen's music. On the other hand, La Bamba, a reimagining of a traditional Mexican folk song, highlighted Valen's ability to innovate and cross cultural barriers. The song's infectious rhythm and Valens's spirited performance made it a staple of rock and roll and a symbol of his heritage. As Valens's career progressed, he faced challenges typical of a young musician navigating the complex world of the music industry. However, his resilience, coupled with his family's support, kept him grounded and focused on his art. Valens's music continued to evolve, reflecting his experiences and aspirations. Rise to fame. Richie Valen's ascent in the music industry was meteoric, a whirlwind journey that transformed him from a local talent to a national sensation within a remarkably short period. This chapter of his life, characterized by explosive fame and groundbreaking achievements, solidified his place as a rock and roll icon. After signing with Delphi Records, Valen's debut single, Come On Let's Go, was released in the summer of 1958. The song's raw energy and Valens's charismatic voice captured the essence of the nascent rock and roll movement, earning him immediate attention from the music industry and fans alike. The single's success was a harbinger of greater things to come, marking Valens as an artist to watch. The momentum from his first single carried Valens forward at an incredible pace. By the end of 1958, he released Donna, a ballad written for his high school sweetheart, Donna Ludwig. The song was a stark contrast to his energetic debut, showcasing his versatility as a musician. Donna climbed to the number two spot on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, a remarkable achievement for the young artist. Its success was complemented by the B-side track, La Bamba, which would later become his most enduring hit. La Bamba was revolutionary, blending a traditional Mexican folk tune with rock and roll rhythms, creating a sound that had never been heard before. Valens's rendition of this classic song not only showcased his incredible talent, but also his deep connection to his Mexican heritage. The song broke cultural barriers, resonating with a diverse audience and earning Valens a unique place in the history of American music. As Valens's popularity soared, he found himself at the forefront of the rock and roll scene. He appeared on television shows, including the famed American Bandstand, where he performed live, further amplifying his fame. These appearances were significant not only for his career, but also for the representation of Mexican-Americans in mainstream media. Valens was one of the first musicians of Mexican descent to achieve such high levels of national fame, becoming a role model and a symbol of possibility for many. In late 1958, Valens released his self-titled album, Richie Valens, which featured a mix of rock and roll tracks and ballads. The album was well-received, showcasing the breadth of his musical abilities and solidifying his status as a rising star. The tracks ranged from energetic rock numbers to soulful melodies, each carrying the unmistakable signature of Valens. Artistry. One of the defining moments of Valens's career was his participation in the Winter Dance Party Tour in early 1959. The tour featured other rock and roll luminaries like Buddy Holly and JP, the big bopper Richardson. It was a traveling showcase of the era's most popular musicians, and Valens, despite being the youngest, was a standout performer. His performances were electrifying, capturing the hearts of audiences across the Midwest. During the tour, Valen's fear of flying, stemming from the traumatic plane crash at his school, was a constant challenge. Despite this, he persevered, committed to sharing his music with his growing fan base. The tour was rigorous, involving long bus rides in harsh winter conditions, but Valen's enthusiasm and dedication never waned. Valens's time on the Winter Dance Party Tour was crucial in expanding his reach to a wider audience. His performances were not just concerts. 
They were cultural exchanges where Valens brought his unique blend of rock and roll and Mexican music to communities across America. His presence on the tour was a statement of diversity and inclusivity in a genre that was rapidly evolving. This a little number for the criminal element here tonight. And you know who you are. As the tour progressed, Valens's fame continued to grow. He was more than just a musician. He was a cultural icon representing a new generation of rock and roll. His music bridged cultural divides, bringing together fans from different backgrounds under the unifying power of his songs. Tragically, Valen's rise to fame was cut short by the plane crash that claimed his life on February 3, 1959. However, the impact of his brief career was profound. In less than a year, Richie Valens had gone from a high school student playing guitar in his neighborhood to a national music sensation. His rapid ascent in the music industry was a testament to his extraordinary talent, charisma, and the universal appeal of his music. Iconic songs and musical influence. Richie Valens, in his brief but impactful career, left an indelible mark on the world of rock and roll through his iconic songs, most notably La Bamba and Donna. These tracks not only showcased his immense talent, but also his ability to transcend cultural boundaries, blending traditional Mexican sounds with the burgeoning rock and roll genre. La Bamba, arguably Valen's most famous song, stands as a testament to his innovative spirit. Originally a Mexican folk song from the state of Veracruz, Valen's transformed it into a rock and roll classic. His rendition was groundbreaking. It was one of the first times a song in Spanish reached mainstream popularity in the predominantly English-speaking United States. Valens's La Bamba was characterized by its energetic guitar riff and a lively beat, a significant departure from its traditional folk roots. This adaptation not only showcased Valens's virtuosic guitar skills, but also his deep respect for his heritage. The song's success broke down cultural barriers, introducing a wide array of listeners to a fusion of sounds they had never experienced before. La Bamba went beyond being just a hit song. It became a cultural icon, symbolizing the blending of Mexican and American musical traditions. It was a precursor to the multicultural movements in music that would come to fruition in the following decades. Valens's version of La Bamba has endured over the years, covered by numerous artists and featured in films, further cementing its place in rock and roll history. On the other end of the spectrum was Donna, a romantic ballad written for Valen's high school sweetheart, Donna Ludwig. The song's softer, more melodic tone showcased a different aspect of Valen's musical talent. Donna was a heartfelt expression of teenage love and longing, themes that resonated with his young audience. The song's simple yet emotional lyrics, combined with Valen's sincere delivery, made it a hit, reaching number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Donna exemplified the versatility of Valen's as an artist, capable of capturing the energy of rock and roll and the tenderness of a love ballad with equal skill. Valen's influence on rock and roll extended beyond his hit songs. He was one of the first Latino artists to gain mainstream success in the genre, paving the way for future generations of Latino musicians. His ability to seamlessly integrate elements of Mexican music into rock and roll challenged the then prevailing notions of what rock music could encompass. Valens's success was a beacon for cultural inclusivity in music, demonstrating that the appeal of rock and roll was universal, transcending linguistic and cultural barriers. Moreover, Valen's guitar-playing style and musical arrangements influenced the development of rock and roll. His energetic, rhythmic guitar work, particularly evident in La Bamba, influenced the genre's direction, moving it towards a more upbeat, danceable sound. His use of electric guitar as a lead instrument in a genre that was still exploring its boundaries contributed to the shaping of rock music's future soundscapes. Valens's impact was also felt in the way he approached his music career. As a young artist navigating the complexities of fame and the music industry, Valens remained authentic to his roots. This authenticity resonated with his fans and set a precedent for future artists to stay true to their cultural and personal identities. 
The legacy of Richie Valens in the realm of rock and roll is multifaceted. His songs like La Bamba and Donna are not just memorable hits. They are milestones in the history of the genre. They represent a fusion of cultures, a daring experimentation that expanded the scope of what rock music could be. His influence is evident in the generations of musicians who followed, those who saw in Valens a model for breaking barriers and creating music that speaks to a diverse audience. The Tragic Plane Crash The tragic plane crash that claimed the life of Richie Valens on February 3, 1959, remains one of the most poignant moments in the annals of rock and roll history. This catastrophe not only ended the life of a promising young star, but also marked a dark day in music, the day the innocence of the early rock and roll generation had come to an end. The day the music died. Often referred to as the day the music died. In late January 1959, Valens joined the Winter Dance Party Tour, a multi-artist concert tour through the Midwest that included Buddy Holly and JP, the Big Bopper Richardson, among others. Despite the excitement of performing, the tour was fraught with difficulties. The musicians traveled in an inadequately equipped bus that struggled with the harsh winter conditions, leading to cases of frostbite and flu among the crew. The grueling schedule and the physical toll of the journey were challenging for everyone involved, including Valens. The tour arrived in Clear Lake, Iowa, for a performance at the Surf Ballroom on February 2, 1959. Following the show, Buddy Holly chartered a small airplane to fly to the next stop in Moorhead, Minnesota, hoping to avoid another long, cold bus journey. Back on the bus, have a good ride, man. We'll see you in North Dakota. Sorry, Tommy. The plane, a Beechcraft Bonanza, had room for the pilot and three passengers. Holly and Richardson, who was suffering from the flu, claimed two of the seats. The fate of the third seat was a matter of chance. Initially, it was intended for Holly's band member, Waylon Jennings. However, Richardson, feeling unwell due to the flu, requested Jennings's seat, to which Jennings graciously agreed. The remaining seat was then offered to another band member, Tommy Alsop. Valens, who had a well-known fear of flying, at first declined the opportunity. However, he later approached Alsop and, perhaps driven by the discomforts of the bus journey, asked if he could take his place. Alsop and Valens flipped a coin to decide, and Valens won the toss, securing his spot on the ill-fated flight. Call it, Richie. Heads! Heads it is! All right, the plane took off from the Mason City Municipal Airport shortly after midnight on February 3rd, piloted by 21-year-old Roger Peterson. The weather was poor, with light snow and gusty winds, and the forecast predicted worsening conditions. Peterson, although a certified commercial pilot, was not fully trained in instrument-only navigation, a crucial skill in such adverse weather conditions. Shortly after takeoff, the plane encountered trouble. The exact sequence of events remains unclear, but it is believed that Peterson became disoriented due to the poor visibility and the lack of proper instrument flight training. The plane deviated from its intended course and at approximately 1 a.m., it crashed into a cornfield several miles northwest of the airport. The impact was catastrophic, instantly killing all four occupants, Buddy Holly, J.P. Richardson, Richie Valens, and Roger Peterson. The crash was not discovered until later that morning when the absence of the plane was noted and a search was initiated. The wreckage was found in the cornfield, with the bodies of the victims thrown from the plane upon impact. The news of the crash sent shockwaves through the music world and the public at large. Valens, only 17 years old, had risen to fame in a matter of months, and his sudden death was a tragic end to a burgeoning career. The aftermath of the crash brought about an outpouring of grief and tributes. Fans and fellow musicians mourned the loss of Valens, Holly, and Richardson, recognizing their contributions to rock and roll and the void their deaths left in the music community. The event was later immortalized in Don McLean's 1971 song, American Pie, in which he refers to the tragedy as the day the music died. We all got the plane crash that claimed the life of Richie Valens was a convergence of unfortunate circumstances and decisions. 
It was a reminder of the fragility of life and the unpredictable nature of fate. Valens, a young man with extraordinary talent and a promising future, became a legend in death, a symbol of the era's rock and roll spirit and the enduring nature of music. Legacy and impact on music history. The untimely death of Richie Valens in the tragic plane crash of February 3, 1959, sent shockwaves through the music industry and left an indelible mark on rock and roll history. Valens, a pioneering figure in the music world, had a profound impact that extended far beyond his brief life and career. His legacy is a rich tapestry of cultural significance, musical innovation, and a path paved for future generations of artists. Valen's contribution to rock and roll was groundbreaking. As one of the first Mexican-American rock stars, he broke through racial and cultural barriers in a predominantly white industry. His music blended elements of his Mexican heritage with the energetic rhythms of rock and roll, creating a unique and compelling sound. Songs like La Bamba and Donna were not just commercial successes, they were cultural statements that challenged the status quo and broadened the horizons of popular music. Valens's success opened doors for other Latino artists, making him a trailblazer for diversity in the music industry. The influence of Valens' music was far-reaching. His innovative fusion of rock and roll with traditional Mexican music laid the groundwork for future genres like Chicano rock and Latin rock. Artists such as Carlos Santana and Los Lobos have cited Valens as a major influence, drawing inspiration from his ability to blend different musical traditions. Valens demonstrated that rock and roll could be a canvas for cultural expression, inspiring countless artists to infuse their music with their own heritage and experiences. Valens's impact on the music industry was also felt in the way he approached his art. His music was characterized by its authenticity and heartfelt emotion, qualities that resonated with audiences and set a standard for genuine expression in rock music. His style, a combination of raw energy and emotional depth, influenced the development of rock and roll, contributing to the genre's evolution into a more diverse and expressive form of art. Despite his short career, Valens's music has endured. His songs continue to be celebrated and covered by artists across various genres, keeping his spirit alive in the music world. La Bamba, in particular, has achieved iconic status, being recognized by the Library of Congress as culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. The song's continued popularity is a testament to Valen's lasting impact and the universal appeal of his music. Valens's life and career have been the subject of various tributes and memorials, further cementing his status as a rock and roll icon. The 1987 biographical film La Bamba, which chronicled his life story, brought renewed attention to his music and legacy, introducing Valens to a new generation of fans. His induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2001 was a posthumous acknowledgement of his significant contribution to the genre. The legacy of Richie Valens extends beyond his musical achievements. His story is one of triumph over adversity, a young man who overcame humble beginnings and cultural barriers to achieve his dreams. Valens's life serves as an inspiration to aspiring musicians, particularly those from marginalized communities, demonstrating that talent and passion can transcend obstacles. Moreover, Valens's death, along with Buddy Holly and J.P. Richardson, marked a turning point in the music industry's approach to artist welfare and touring conditions. The tragedy highlighted the need for better safety measures and more humane scheduling for touring artists, leading to changes that improved the lives of future generations of musicians. Cultural significance. Richie Valen's emergence as a Mexican-American icon in the late 1950s marked a significant cultural milestone. In an era where the American music scene was predominantly dominated by white artists, Valens's success was not just a personal achievement, but a breakthrough for the representation of Hispanic culture in mainstream music. His influence resonated deeply, transcending the confines of his short-lived career and leaving an enduring legacy for subsequent generations of musicians. Valens, born Richard Stephen Valenzuela, grew up in a world where his Mexican heritage was integral to his identity. His foray into music was colored by this cultural backdrop, which he seamlessly integrated into the fabric of rock and roll. At a time when racial and ethnic divides were pronounced, 
Valens bridged these gaps with his music, bringing the rhythms and melodies of his ancestry to a broader audience. His ability to synthesize these diverse musical elements not only won him fans from various backgrounds, but also served as a source of pride for the Mexican-American community. La Bamba, Valens's most iconic song, exemplifies this fusion of cultures. By reimagining a traditional Mexican folk song as a rock and roll hit, Valens did more than create a popular tune. He forged a cultural dialogue. The song's success challenged the prevailing norms of the music industry and opened the door to a more inclusive musical landscape. For many Mexican Americans, La Bamba was a validation of their cultural heritage, a sign that their music and stories had a place in the American tapestry. Valens's impact extended beyond his musical contributions. He became a symbol of possibility and hope for many young Mexican Americans and other minorities. His rise to fame was a testament to the potential of transcending societal barriers through talent and determination. For aspiring musicians from marginalized communities, Valens was a beacon of inspiration, demonstrating that cultural diversity could be a source of strength, not a limitation. The ripple effect of Valens's career can be seen in the generations of Latino musicians who followed in his footsteps. Artists across various genres have cited Valens as an influence, drawing from his pioneering blend of rock and roll with Latino elements. His legacy is evident in the rise of Chicano rock, a genre that emerged in the 1960s and 1970s, and in the works of artists like Carlos Santana, Los Lobos, and Selena. These artists, and many others, have built upon the foundation laid by Valens, expanding the presence and influence of Latino culture in popular music. Valens also played a crucial role in challenging and changing stereotypes about Mexican-American youth in the 1950s. At a time when negative portrayals were common, Valens presented a different narrative, that of a talented, charismatic young artist whose background was an integral part of his appeal. His mainstream success helped shift perceptions and paved the way for a more nuanced understanding of Mexican-American culture and identity. The enduring popularity of Valen's music is a testament to its cultural significance. Decades after his death, songs like La Bamba and Donna continue to resonate with audiences, often serving as a gateway for younger listeners to explore the rich history of Latino contributions to American music. His story and music have been celebrated in films, documentaries, and tributes, keeping his legacy alive and accessible to new generations. In educational contexts, Valens's life and work have become subjects of study, providing valuable insights into the intersections of music, culture, and identity. His story is often used as an example of overcoming adversity and embracing one's heritage making him a relevant and compelling figure in discussions about cultural diversity and representation.